Looking for a breakfast item that's a bit on the sweet side? Well, look no further. Let's make some Hungarian coffee cake together. <laughs> this coffee cake is more like a sweet yeasted bread, and it's made with butter, cinnamon brown sugar, and pecans. You know, basically what dreams are made of, right? Now, this delicious cake also goes by the name of monkey bread in the United States. And in Hungary, it's called Arankauska. Its origin does come from the Hungarian Jewish immigrants that settled in the United States. And in my version, I use my no-time dough recipe to make this wonderful pastry. I call it no-time dough because um, I've increased the yeast and the sugar, allowing for a faster rise and not having to wait all day for the rise to ferment and proof. And this enables me to uh, make it quickly and on the fly. This recipe also makes four to six servings, a perfect dish to share with colleagues, friends, and family. So here's how you make it. Using a stand mixer bowl, weigh out each ingredient starting with about 7.7 .7 ounces of warm water. Then we'll add in equal parts active dry yeast and sugar, half ounce of each. Then add in some heavy whipping cream, or you could use milk or oil, um, about one ounce. At this point, give it a quick mix to ensure the yeast is all dissolved. The yeast will start to awaken and feed on the sugar. And now the cream or the oil that you added will further add flavor and retain moisture. Now let's go ahead and add 13.7 ounces of all-purpose flour. Now you could also use bread flour here as well. Then add in a quarter ounce of salt. Throw this in the mixer using a dough hook. Uh, throw it on speed two and let it go for about 10 minutes. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, no problem. You can easily mix and knead this by hand. I would just suggest uh, kneading for an additional five minutes more to ensure that you achieve the same pillowy uh, texture. Now, when the time is up, the dough should be soft and pillow-like. It shouldn't be sticking to your hands. Um, and it should be just, again, very pillowy. Now, just go ahead and take this dough, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this dough, and we're going to um, wrap it in some plastic just to let it bench a bit, right? So I'm just gonna kind of circle it around like this. I'm gonna find a sheet pan with parchment paper, and I'm just gonna place it down on the, down there just like that. You know, let me give you a little shot of that. Cover it with a little bit of plastic, lightly, and we'll let it rest there for just a bit. And the reason why we're doing that, okay, and I know I did, I did say this is a no-time dough recipe, but we are, um, after, uh, think of the gluten, and as it's using its, all these strands, right, they're like muscle strands, right, the gluten becomes very, um, you know, fibrous. And we've worked it out at the gym. So if you've ever gone to the gym and you work out and, you know, got your swell on, right, that's what they call it, well, that's kind of what we happened here, right? And when you get your swell on, you kind of walk around all stiff and you kind of need to sit down and relax a little bit and maybe sit in a sauna or something and then, then your muscles relax. Same principles happen here with the dough. You want to let it just rest a bit because what we're going to do is we're going to try to form it into a long log. And if you try to do that too soon without letting the gluten relax, it's just going to fight you because it's going to go try to go back and pull back to its original shape, which was this ball. So we'll let it rest for a minute and then it'll be ready and much easier for us to manipulate it as we, as we want. Okay, now when the dough is nice and relaxed back from the spa, so to speak, uh, uh, we will then begin portioning out the dough into little duffs. Now to do this, you simply just pound out the dough like a pancake and then you start rolling it up. Uh, then with a bit of pressure, uh, pushing outward, start rolling the dough, stretching it out into a long rope or a log shape, about the length of, of a sheet pan. Now if the dough is dry, go ahead and brush the rope with a bit of water when you're finished. Uh, but if it's, if it's still moist, then it's great. And then using a bench knife or equivalent, start cutting small golf ball sized duffs, working your way down the rope. I found this to be the fastest uh, way possible. Then toss each duff in a cinnamon sugar mixture. Here I'm using a four to one ratio 
of sugar to cinnamon. That bit of brushed water that we put on helps the cinnamon sugar uh, to adhere to the dough. Then assemble all the covered duffs on either a sheet pan lined with parchment paper, like I am, or a round baking dish. Now don't worry too much if they are touching each other. In fact, you want them touching a bit. At this point, it helps to proof them a bit, so you just need a warm place in your kitchen, or if you have an oven that has a proof option, feel free to use that. And we'll just park them here while we assemble the icing. And this will help them expand and grow a bit more. The icing is really easy to make. You'll just need three ingredients, butter, brown sugar, and pecans. Start by melting a stick of butter, which is about four ounces, in a mixing bowl. Then add one cup of brown sugar and heat it up. Periodically mix it until it starts to come together. And once together, lastly, chop some pecans, add the pecans to the mixture and give it one more final mix. Ta-da! We're now ready to ice our coffee cake. By now, the duffs should have risen and grown, getting even more closer to each other, um, and it sort of becomes like one unified pastry here. Now start liberally pouring the warm icing all over every duff. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Okay, now drop it into a preheated oven of 375 degrees and bake it off for about seven to 10 minutes. We are looking for the bread to fully bake off and the icing to just start to slightly caramelize. Uh, so we're looking for that. Every oven's a little bit different, so keep an eye on it. Again, seven to maybe 10 minutes. Looks about done. Let's check it out. Oh, look at this. So good. Wow, look at this. The aroma in this house is unreal. Now, if you have flatmates or family living with you, there's good reason why you made more than one portion. They'll be coming down and chasing after you here in a second. Here it is, Hungarian coffee cake. Delicious, soft pastries with sweet and cinnamon and pecans. It's buttery, it's pillowy, it's just wonderful. If you brought this to a brunch party, it would definitely be a showstopper and you'd be the hero. Boom, Hungarian coffee cake. Make this at home, you will be so glad that you did. Enjoy and cheers. Oh, so fun. Hi, I'm Chef Chris Wesley, and if you like this video, please support by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. Hit me up with questions and let me know what you want me to make next. Thanks so much.